Well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry Solar video. In this video, we're going to talk about an updated engineering thing that I'm doing for the Genetry Solar Inverters. 833 Genetry, toll free Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Eastern Daylight Time. You can text me at that number, you can call me at that number. Do keep in mind my call volume is extremely high. GenetrySolar.com, that's where you'll find power jack inverters, custom inverters. Wi-Fi boards, uh, soon to be new control boards, and of course the new Genetry Solar Inverters. So here I am, uh, as promised, giving an update on kind of this uh, rough draft of an inverter. Uh, just to give you a good idea of what's going to be included in the new Genetry Solar Inverters. Now this is, this is basically off-the-shelf parts at this point. Um, so there's not like any trade secrets or anything. I mean, anybody could literally put this together if they were to buy the parts. Eventually, uh, you know, the core of our product is actually going to be somewhat in the design, but also the control board and Wi-Fi board paired up with the proper equipment. So, um, you know, I guess feel free to build your own if you want to uh, and beat me to market if you really desire that. But you'll have to get a hold of our code and you'll obviously have to get a hold of our uh, control board design and everything else so uh, good luck with that so anyway um, the uh, the thing is about this inverter I've literally spent almost my entire Saturday and this is what I've accomplished and it's not just that I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do there are issues when you design an inverter and this is why it takes time to get things together the way that you want I have a list of minimums in order to make that happen things have to give there has to be some changes there you know it's not just as simple as just you know throwing it together and off you go uh, even if you say well I'm gonna do this with off-the-shelf parts so uh, what you're seeing here is a representation of the inverter that we're gonna have except for it is going to be shorter so this inverter is 60 centimeters this is the 8 kilowatt version 10.3 base as well as rear and front so it's 60 centimeters and for us in the states it's actually almost two feet long just shy of two feet so you can see this is the actual main board that we're going to be using minus these back plates because i don't have any of the smaller ones handy uh, you know, this is all from part out stuff. So basically I'm using what I have available um, But this is what the main board is going to look like it will have a total of four caps so And we're not going to cut it down some of these main boards and the smaller ones have one cap. So we're gonna have four uh, 100 volt caps These are 80 volts, but we're actually going to be using the new power jack 100 volt caps 10,000 microfarads and we're actually going to be using these caps as well as these same MOSFETs in all of our inverter line from 12 volts to 48 volts. We are not going to differentiate between the two cost wise. It's a uh, minimal difference between them. So that will give you the opportunity to upgrade by simply buying a new transformer. You will have everything you need except for the transformer and then you just need to reprogram the control board to your voltage and boom you're done you've got yourself a 48 volt inverter for example so if you got a 12 volt system and you're like hey i want to go to 12 24 volts or maybe i want to step it up to 48 volts i've got this genetry solar inverter it's already pretty much ready for 48 volts all i have to do is replace the transformer boom you're done that way you don't have to buy a whole brand new inverter that's 48 volts. You've already got 90% of what you need right there. Of course, we would love it if you would buy another inverter, but I'm not going to nickel and dime my customers. I'm going to make the inverter as much of a value proposition as possible because you're going to be paying more for our stuff than you will for a power jack inverter. So I want to make sure you get the most bang for the buck. So, yes... Um, these are the brand new uh, 48 volt FETs from PowerJack, and I can't get those to focus in. Of course, I never can. Here, let's see. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Ugh. Anyway, these are the replacement for the HY3810 MOSFETs, and we have discovered, actually Sid has discovered, that these are actually easier to drive 
which means that they produce less heat and there's less heat overall versus the HY3810s. So I will be using these MOSFETs. I'll be using this exact MOS board. So it's going to have the six MOSFETs. This style of a board, it's not going to have this back plate here uh, because, like I said, I didn't have any one, any of the new 10.3C ones that um, the MOSFETs go directly into the heat sink rather than this plate. So, again, rough draft basically, but it's not going to, the Genetry Solar Inverter will not have the back plate there. But it will have these 48 volt FETs regardless of your uh, voltage. Okay. Now, it is true that let's say you've got a 2000 watt inverter you don't need one two three four five six fets per leg here on the transformer to drive a 3000 watt 24 volt inverter so the only differences that you're going to see is just the number of fets that will be on here so if you're hoping unfortunately if you're hoping that you can upgrade not only your voltage but also your wattage at the same time that would require more money because every one of these MOSFETs is, you know, PowerJack actually assembles their MOS boards. So they buy the MOSFETs, um, you know, in bulk. They buy a bulk lot of MOSFETs, and then they their engineers actually, uh, you know, put the resistors on here, the LEDs and all of this stuff. They do it basically, a lot of it is done by hand. Um, so every extra MOSFET that's thrown on here is going to add probably, a, you know, a couple dollars of cost for me to per, uh, purchase these things from PowerJack. Now, it might very well be that that couple of dollars won't make a difference in the end and I can price them accordingly and you're not going to notice that couple bucks. And then, yes, I'll just say, hey, you know what? Six FETs, whether it's a 3000 watt inverter, 5000 watt inverter, whatever the case is, because if you think about it, my home inverter that I've got over there has the same number of FETs as this one, literally identical. In fact, my home inverter is using the older HY3810s, and as soon as I get the new control boards and the new Wi Fi boards, I'm going to be installing these FETs into my inverter uh, because I want it to represent as close as possible as a Genetry Solar Inverter will be when we get up in scale to the size of that inverter right there. So, uh, believe it or not, I mean, other than minus two caps here and smaller heat sinks, believe it or not, this here could almost drive a 15 kilowatt inverter. It probably would drive the 15 kilowatt inverter just fine because, you know, here's you know here's the difference obviously yes you get more length here as far as you have better cooling of course because you got bigger heat sinks you got better cooling but with the high speed fans i don't know maybe someday i'll test that and see what that's all about now you if you remember correctly i did in fact test a small in fact i actually have it right down there I tested this on camera. See that little itty bitty main board? I tested that to roughly about four kilowatts, and that's a 12 volt. Uh, if you were if you had a 48 volt uh, unit, then you would definitely be able to crank more out of it. But uh, the breaking point was between 4,000 and 4,500 watts for that, and I believe it had something to do more with low voltage than overheating or anything else like that. I think the low frequency driver just gave it up. So. We are basically, you are going to be absolutely fine. Whoops, let me zoom out. And again, you're going to be absolutely fine with this getting 5 kilowatts with this particular inverter. This will definitely handle the 5 kilowatts and more. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, so again, there is a possibility, I'm thinking about it right now, there is a possibility that we may design even our 12-volt inverters to have all these... Fets, and that way you could theoretically upgrade your transformer to a larger transformer um, and then you wouldn't have to you know worry about um, buying a bigger unit you would just need a bigger transformer obviously so th i guess that is a possibility i'll talk to sid about that i'll talk to jack about that i'll see if that's a possibility um, it all depends on cost if it's going to cost me an extra twenty dollars for an extra set of FETs for this inverter, I have two choices. I either pass that $20 along to you, 
or I eat the $20, which means my bottom line goes down by $20. And I'm trying to keep the cost as low as possible, obviously. So that's just it. And nobody's going to, if you know, I could engineer a $2,000 inverter here if I really wanted to, but nobody's going to pay those kind of prices. So I'm still trying to make it as cheap as possible, but also much more reliable than a power jack converter. So when I say cheap, I don't mean chintzy or anything else like that. I mean just low cost. So it, there is such a thing as low cost and high performance. I know that old saying, you get what you pay for. I get it. But trust me, we're going to be more expensive than a power jet converter, and you're gonna, you're just going to love it. So anyway, you can see there's quite a bit of room here. We actually are going to be cutting the chassis down. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, a 4-kilowatt chassis, which is this guy right here, this 4-kilowatt chassis uh, will not accommodate this transformer and mainboard, even squeezing it down. So it would bump right into, the transformer itself would bump right into these connectors. Now, we do have a custom front panel, beautifully designed by Sid. I can't share it with you yet because I don't want to. That's going to be part of the big reveal. But we do have a custom front panel design um, for the Genetry Solar Inverters. Much, much more intuitive. Much easier to use. Just better overall. So we do have that okay so even with that though we do have a new power button beautifully designed well actually sid bought it but he integrated it into the genetry solar inverters beautiful multi-color led push button power button so no more of this three-way switch stuff and it's colored so it can alert you based on color so if it's red you got an error if it's yellow maybe they're your up on your wattage and you're almost to uh, over voltage or something else like that so that's like a warning and then green means everything's fine and then obviously if it's dark then uh, the inverter isn't on so that's a custom thing that um, Sid is working on it works beautifully and uh, it's programmed for the switch so yes it does change colors and that's awesome uh, I was completely blown away when he showed me that switch I thought that was just an awesome touch to add to our inverters that power jack doesn't have so, yes, a completely custom front panel. For this demonstration, obviously, I'm using what I have here. Not much I can do about that. So that's just the way that it is. But um, we will be able to cut some space out of here. Uh, we need approximately about an inch and a quarter clearance from the transformer to the uh, front panel. That's approximately what we actually need in order to clear safely. I don't want it... like like a half a millimeter between the two so that if there's a slightest shift then you know you're you're done for i want at least a little bit of breathing room in there and you can see i want a little bit of breathing room in here as well because i don't want the heat from either of these things to transfer to each other or build up in this area and then everything gets hotter because of it i want some breathing room in here and with this the fan doesn't produce heat well i mean it does a little bit i guess but the fan can be much, much closer to these heat sinks and still be very, very uh, effective as far as cooling. So we can take out about three and a half inches here and uh, roughly about uh, two and a half inches on the front. And that'll give us this extra space right here to be able to work with. Um, so, yeah, plenty of room. Now, all the wires and so on, you can't see on the other side. Those are oversized wires because I didn't have anything, and I don't want to cut up a bunch of wires. Um, but our wires are going to be cut to length, so you won't have all this extra slack. Like, you can see, look at all this extra slack here. I don't want any of that garbage. I don't need all of this extra slack. I don't need them wrapped around like a drip loop or something else like that. They need to be just maybe uh, a centimeter or two of slack so that, yes, if the transformer does unfortunately decide to move, it's not going to bring these taut. It'll give it just a little bit. Plus, I want to be able to keep them away from these fets. All this wiring here, when there's a lid on there, it's just all going to be crunched in like that. That's that's terrible. You, you know, it's not going to work. So uh, with the if the the cables are shorter then they'll be just long enough to reach we'll have these just long enough to make one loop through this choke which will improve efficiency and no load draw and uh we're actually going to use two chokes as a matter of fact um for that um i have some more testing i have to do as far as no load but uh, the way that sid got the no load drawdown 
just by changing the control board my god um, yes the chokes are going to be a big part of it but power jack has always had chokes in and in, in the transformers so uh that you know that's that just the, you know the control board is going to help out with that a lot so I will have appropriately sized wires that are not all over the place. I want to keep this as clean as possible. I don't need 30,000 wires floating around all in here. And then you got to manage your wires and you get all this garbage. I mean, I don't have an ATS switch. There's no fan switch. We're going to be using a different style of fuse, um, a, a resettable fuse. So that's going to be there. And, of course, we're getting rid of all this extra junk that's on the front, the battery charge stuff. All that stuff's going to be done from the Wi-Fi board, so you don't need any of that. And uh, so, anyway, we've got the, the design worked out. I'm going to be cutting these cables to size. And then, of course, the transformer you've got here, you can see it fits inside just barely. I stand up here. It's barely, just barely, but it does actually fit. So, bigger than an AS4, slightly bigger, it does fit, and you can see that I've got this piece of paper right here. Now, credit where credit is due, uh, a gentleman, a subscriber who's purchased products for me in the past, Joe, actually brought me to this idea of having a J-hook. So, a J-hook would essentially kind of be like what PowerJack does for the new inverters where they have the bracket that goes you know across they've got two brackets and i call it the they call it the spider bracket i also refer to it as a as a uh, spider bracket um but essentially the spider bracket is four legs and it holds the transformer in place but the problem is they still put a pad a rubber pad as well as a metal uh disc on top of that and then they use goodbye uh tape measure and they use a uh uh, a bolt that goes down the center still to hold not only the bracket in place, but also the lid in place So you guys know where this is going All the heat that's gonna get trapped in there has nowhere to go and even when power jack added these little holes here all they did was basically nothing so All this heat gets trapped in here. So inside here might be let's say 200 degrees and then outside here where the fan is able to blow across might be 140 degrees. Hot spots are going to happen. There's not really too much that we can do about that. you got to have equal load between L1 and L2. Conditions have to be met, stuff like that. But we're going to try to eliminate or reduce those as much as possible. So by doing so, having the, uh, the J clamps or brackets here like this, and this is just a paper example, the bracket would mount just like the spider bracket would, and it would come up rather tight around the transformer with probably some kind of a insulation pad underneath, a very thin one, just so that the metal portion of it can't scrape away at the enamel on the transformer. And then it would come down probably about a half an inch into the hole. And you would have four of these in place. They would be thick enough probably a quarter to a third of an inch thick so they would be strong enough to be able to hold this transformer in place during shipping at the same time it would allow air to flow through this transformer and we would have a fan directly above in fact there's two examples here this is the one we're not going to use that's a typical power jack lid fan now, even today they don't even use lid fans anymore for a lot of their inverters but that's that's a typical power jack inverter fan. Um, this is one of my high-speed delta fans here. Okay. Now, what you can see, uh, if you can see that, whoa, there's not much room there at all. And especially if you add another third quarter an inch to a third J bracket or J clamp in there, that's going to push this fan up even higher. We don't want this fan to come into contact with any of the hardware here. So, with that in mind. We are requesting that PowerJack increase the height, the overall height of the inside of this. So the front panel, rear panel, as well as the lid by 1.5 centimeters. That will give us enough clearance to have the fan directly over the transformer without touching anything. Also probably about a centimeter of clearance there so that it's not so close that, you know, the, the fan itself is heating up because of the transformer. And then... What we're going to do is we're going to have both of these fans uh, out of the box running together. They will be on separate channels. 
So if you guys know about the Wi-Fi board, you can have up to three channels of fans or six fans total, two fans per channel. So we'll have them on separate channels so that our customers can customize the cooling they want. And I will have multiple thermistors. I'll have one inside here to monitor the inside temperatures, a couple, probably four thermistors in total monitoring the health of this transformer. So, and I'll also have one thermistor here and then one thermistor on the other side, obviously. What we found is even under load, these are typically about the same temperature. So I'll put the thermistor over here at the far end away from the fan so that the hottest end is going to be over here and that way it can react. Anyway, um, so that's pretty much the way it is. And, and the idea for this, it's nothing, nothing special or anything, but the idea actually came from Joe. He's one of my customers and he suggested this. He actually was kind enough to draw up a rough draft for me, a rough drawing of how it works and um, we're going to hopefully implement that. Powerjack may use that I idea as well. I don't know, but um, that's what we're going to have to do because having this ridiculous crap, having that sit on top there is like literally like putting a blanket over the transformer, okay? It cannot properly ventilate the heat and then you will have premature shutdown so these transformers power jack transformers and i've always said this if you remove the transformer bolt and transformer lid etc you're going to get more out of the transformer power jack they make decent actually i would argue even good low frequency toroids the problem is is to solve the shipping problem they have to put this crap on top here and you you probably i would say upwards of 30 to 40 percent loss in performance because of this crap so we if we remove that by using these j brackets yes some of the transformers still going to be covered but it would allow air to go through here and they would none of them would touch each other so you don't have anything going through the transformer technically um, so we wouldn't have to worry about any of that and you could still cool the transformer, get much more out of it. That's why I chose the AS5 transformer, which the AS5 is typically found in PowerJack's 9,000 watt transformers. If you buy a brand new 9,000 watt transformer, you'll get an ASL or yeah, a 9,000 watt inverter from PowerJack. You'll get the ASL5 transformer. Their 10K units get the ASL 6.5, and their 15K units get the ASL 9 transformer. The 20K is ASL 10, then ASL 11 maybe, I don't know, but anyways. Um, so this is the transformer that's actually found in the 9,000 watt units, and we're stuffing it into this 5,000 watt unit. So, and then on top of that, when you, you know, improve the cooling, by getting rid of all this garbage, you can increase that performance even further. So we're increasing the ceiling even more. So I haven't had a chance to fire this up or anything else like that. I just want to show you how far I was on this. Yeah, I spent a whole Saturday putting this together because of engineering things. You know, when I set this fan on here and then tried to put the lid on, I said, oh my God, there's no clearance whatsoever there because this transformer is taller than an AS4 transformer. And even if they did take the bolt and everything all, all else out there, you've got an extra quarter to a third of an inch thickness on this j bracket there's no way this fan would fit under the lid so we have to lift the lid up by a centimeter and a half in order to give an uh, an adequate amount of clearance that way this fan is dedicated to cooling the transformer you've got this fan is going to get you along probably 90 percent of the time this one intake fan so that's going to get you along but then when your transformer heats up and you've got you know three four thousand watts of load on this transformer then this transformer fan will kick in and help cool it and bring it back down that's exactly the same way that i have my inverter with six fans set up i've got just one channel of fans that runs basically most of the time for cooling and then uh, if the inverter, you know, if I'm running my dryer or anything else like that, then the rest of the fans will kick in and help out with the cooling. So it's going to be the same principle here, except it's just on a smaller scale. So all this design is not final, of course. 
when Sid sends me the new control boards, which will be here, I'm hoping Tuesday. I was hoping Monday. Looks like it's going to be Tuesday. I'm going to mount one of the new control boards here, get a Wi-Fi board hooked up to here, and then I'm going to start testing this. We're going to go over some basic testing, looking at the sine wave, things like that. And because this is 48 volts, I can go directly to my battery bank, and I will likely disconnect my main house inverter, and I will connect it directly to this inverter, and I will run my house on this. Now, obviously, I can't run my dryer on it. Technically, I could, but with efficiency, my dryer consumes between 4,400 and 4,600 watts of current per hour. So technically I could if that's what was all I was running and I had a damn near 90% efficiency rating, I might do that. But I don't want to burn this thing up the, the first two seconds I've got it up and running. I have to see where the limits are. I have to watch the heat. I'm going to put a 500 watt load on it and see, you know, if it's overheating at 500 watts, we got a problem. If it doesn't start overheating until 2500 watts, well, then we still have a problem, but at least we're on the right track we can figure out what's going on with that technically speaking you got three wires here this is eight gauge wire 120 volts 2500 watts on this wire 125 or 120 volts 2500 watts on this wire this is adequately sized for 5000 watts between the two again you're talking 120 volts per leg Okay, so this wire is more than adequate. We are going to be upgrading the wire from the boards to the front, the connectors, and all this other stuff. So you're going to see a big improvement there as well. So yes, I will be testing this crude mock-up of a Genetry Solar Inverter. And if it passes my tests, it's going into my main inverter as well. So be looking for that. I will try to get you as much data as I possibly can. I still have a hard limit of 5,000 watts, but if I'm brave enough... Uh, which I probably should be, but I'm not going to do it right off the bat. If I'm brave enough, I will run a load of laundry on this, and then I will be limited literally by my batteries. Um, you know, I'll do it when it's sunny so that most of the power comes from the solar and not the battery. But anyway, you get the point. I'll get the tests out there, but I want to do some slow tests. I'm going to ease my way into this, and I don't want to burn it up from minute one because then that doesn't give me the chance to find flaws or weaknesses so i'm not going to hook this right up to 5,000 watts right out of the gate and, and then burn it up in two seconds and be like well that's that um so i'm going to slowly work my way up and then when i'm confident that our design is good that our cooling is good i'll be throwing in some 5,000 watt tests on this thing and i will show you guys that it will do 5,000 watts i'm confident but i can't promise you anything okay because i don't have a working model yet so we're close to it and then when we pass all these tests and powerjack designs us a custom case for us then out of the box from powerjack they will handle 5000 watts they will be we'll be installing our control board it'll have our branding on it it'll have everything up to our designs and everything and uh, we will be able to sell it as a genetry solar 5000 watt inverter we also have many other inverters coming, the 12 volt, 3000 watt, 2000 watt, 24 volt, 2000 watt, 3000 watt, maybe some 4Ks in there, I don't know yet, uh, but uh, so we are going to be producing more, and they will have the same basic design, it's just they'll be on a smaller scale. And then we'll be able to, once we're done with this 5 kilowatt unit, I'm going to step up to probably an 8 kilowatt, which will be uh, more or less in this chassis style right here. Actually, this is where I got the transformer from uh, to this AS5, ASL5 transformer. Guys, you got it out of here. This is a damaged unit. Um, so uh, I'll start working my up, way up to these chassis and you know, just go from there. But again, as I mentioned before, daisy chain inverters means that I don't have to build a 30,000 watt inverter. I can max out at 15 kilowatts. And if you need more than 15 kilowatts, buy two inverters. It gives you some flexibility as far as a backup. So you can run them both and you uh, split the load between the two, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go the route of power jack and have this massive 400 pound inverter because when that one inverter goes down, you're down. You're down for good. 
But if you got two inverters doing the same thing and one of them goes down, at least you can still run your lights, maybe your air conditioning, maybe you can only run half of your power tools or something like that if you're in a shop or whatever, but at least you're still online until you get service or a replacement. So anyways, I've talked for 30 minutes now. You guys can see my progress. You can see where things are going. Nothing is final yet. Please don't take this as gospel and say, well, I don't like this. I don't like that. We are designing it as we go along. This is a rough mock-up of what you're going to see in a Genetry Solar Inverter. The four 100-volt caps, the 48-volt FETs, the big AS5, ASL5 transformer, the two high-speed fans are going to be here. There's going to be one right over, uh, over the top of this. We will make it work. I'm not going to sell you a 5,000 watt inverter if it will only do 4,500 watts continuous. I promise you, if I sell it as 5,000 watts, it will do 5,000 watts, okay? That's what we're going to do, all right? I'm not going to shortchange you. I promise you that. I'm not going to tarnish my reputation on something as frugal as 5,000 or 500 or 1,000 watts. I'm not going to do that. So, anyways, uh, I will be sending sample units out to customers. I have a couple of customers who've been extremely loyal, and they are going to be getting sample units in order to help test these things. I'm also going to be sending out sample control boards to some other customers who currently have power jack converters who are interested in upgrading. So uh, all that stuff, I will have the details, you know, for those uh, who are capable. Um, it's mainly going out to those people who have a large battery bank who can actually test an inverter like this at 5,000 watts. It's pointless to power it up and say, well, I'm just going to run a few lights on it. Because then I've spent, you know, a whole bunch of money on you running your lights, which I already know it can do. So these are customers who have large battery banks, large solar panel uh, arrays or wind or whatever and are able to run continuously for hours and hours and hours five kilowatts of draw that's the whole point so test and evaluate and it'll be complimentary for me from me to you so anyway uh, yeah 32 minutes if you have any questions let me know 833 genetry toll free monday through friday nine to five 95 Eastern Daylight Time and GenetreeSolar.com. Thanks again for all of your support. I will keep you updated and take care.